Hello everyone, I've got another video for y'all. A while back, I found this dresser on Facebook Marketplace for $200. It's a little on the high end, but this piece is a potential showstopper. I knew I could do something cool with it. The top had a lot of damage, blemishes in the veneer, a burn mark here, and the edges of the veneer were raised up due to water damage. So I won't be staining the top on this one, I'm just going to be painting the whole thing. The first thing I do when I get started is remove all of the hardware. To remove these emblems, I used a flathead screwdriver to pry them up. To clean all the dirt and grime off of this dresser, I'm using Super Clean that I've diluted with some water. Super Clean's very easy to use whenever you're prepping your furniture. Just spray it on, wipe it off. Removing all of this dirt and grime ensures that our paint has a great surface to adhere to. You can see how much dirt came off of just the front of the dresser. If you were to skip this step and go straight to sanding, all of this would gum up your sandpaper, slow you down, and cost you money. Once I had the whole piece wiped down, I removed all of the drawers and put the dresser on paint cans so it would be easier to work on. For the sanding, I'm going to start on the top using this Black & Decker Orbital Sander and 120 grit sandpaper. Usually when I'm sanding in preparation for paint, I'm not trying to sand all the way to the wood, but in order to sand these blemishes out, I added extra pressure to the sander to get down to the raw wood, then use pressure on the edge of the sander to feather the finish away so that everything was smooth for when I paint it later. For the base of the dresser, I use a detail sander to get into these smaller areas and then I'll come back and sand it by hand with 220 grit sandpaper just to make sure that I get into all these detailed areas so that the paint has a better surface to adhere to. Once all the sanding is complete, the last thing I need to do before I start painting this piece is remove all of the dust. I usually knock all of the dust off first with a dry rag or brush and then come back with a damp rag to get the remaining dust so that nothing interferes with my paint. This piece had a lot of detail where dust could get trapped in so I gave it a little extra spray and scrubbing just to make sure there was nothing in my way later. Once this little bit of water dries up, I can start painting. The first paint I'm going to apply is this Rust-Oleum Flat Gray Primer. Priming your piece will give your paint something better to adhere to, allow you to use less coats of your paint because you're covering up the brown already. It'll also seal in any bleeds that may come up from the sanding process. I typically apply two or three thin coats of primer, giving it about 15 to 30 minutes to dry in between each coat, depending on the weather. The color I chose for this piece is Valspar Signature's Armada Blue in a satin finish. I was inspired to pick the colors I'm going to use on this piece after watching Jay Streezy, a live streamer who's been stuck in Vietnam for the past year, wearing a Vietnamese Ao Yai during the last Tet holiday. Ao Yai. Ao Yai. Ao Yai. I thought this color combo would look real cool on this dresser that I had. Jay is still in Vietnam on lockdown, but you can check out some highlights from his live streams on his YouTube channel where he gets street haircuts, street shoe shines, eats rats, goes surfing with a custom tailored suit. Really cool content. Be sure to go show his channel some love. I'll be spraying this streezy blue out of my Magnum Project Painter Plus. Whenever I'm applying paint with a sprayer, I like to use thin coats to make sure that I don't get any runs and drips. The sprayer puts out a lot of product in a very short amount of time, so it's usually safer to go lighter, as you can always apply more coats later. Whereas if you have to fix drips and runs, you'll end up wasting way more time.
Here's what the piece looks like after the first coat with the paint still drying. I could tell that the blue was way too bright compared to my inspiration for this piece. Luckily I had some black paint laying around so I started adding the black paint to the blue to darken it up so I could get it to the right tone. You can see as I apply the updated color it seems to match a lot better so I went ahead with this darker blue and applied two more coats. It was cool and a little humid when I applied this paint so I waited about an hour in between each coat. After giving the paint about a day to dry, I was ready to accent all the details with this gold gilding wax by Dixie Bell. I've been using it a lot in my videos recently. You just apply some to your finger or something else, rub it on when you want to apply it to, give it some time to dry, buff it, and it's good to go. On the bigger edges, I used a sponge because it was easier to apply more at once. For the details, I thought it'd be easier to use a brush so that I could stay in the lines and also get into all the smaller areas of the details without having a whole bunch to clean up afterwards. However, it turned out that the bristles of the brush would put the gold down in the recessed areas, which I had to come back and clean up later. Since I was going to have to clean up this gold anyways, I figured I might as well apply everything with the sponge and then come back later and clean it up. In the end, this method allowed me to get some really clean lines on the gold detailing, and I feel like it took a lot less time than trying to apply it with a small brush. You can see here where it got real sloppy after I applied it with the sponge, but I came back and cleaned it up and these lines came out looking super bold and super clean. I found that you can use water to clean this wax up, but it's a lot easier and faster to use mineral spirits or paint thinner. With the gold done, I'm ready to finish this piece up by top coating it with this Parks Pro Gloss Water-Based Polyurethane. When I'm applying polyurethane out of this Graco sprayer, I'll apply two to three thin coats and then come back with a thicker coat which usually dries out real smooth and glass like. You can see that by the time I'm on the third coat the paint looks very bold and has some gloss to it. It's pretty typical to see a white milky color whenever you're applying water-based polyurethane and thicker coats but as it dries up it should clear up. Unfortunately for me, that's not what happened this time. When the polyurethane dried up, it still had a milky and splotchy appearance. The top had little white dots all in the finish, along with the edges and other areas of the paint deciding to do this nice crackle finish. So why did this happen? Turns out there's several reasons. First of all, I didn't stir this polyurethane whenever I loaded it into my sprayer. And after a little bit of research, I found out that water-based polyurethane, especially higher sheens, have a lot of additives that will collect at the bottom of the container over time. So when I was spraying, I was spraying mostly these additives, which didn't clear up when I sprayed them thick. This created the dots on the top from the mist of my spray gun, along with the milky looking finish. The crackling effect was the result of two issues. First of all, it was 70 degrees and 90% humidity when I worked on this project. I probably shouldn't have been trying to do this in this type of weather, but I decided to take that risk. Secondly, I sprayed the top too thick for these weather conditions. Both of these issues combined caused the polyurethane to crack which was kind of a neat effect, but the crackling was so randomly placed that it wasn't something I could just pull off and call character. Now that I knew what my mistakes were, it was time to fix them. I let the dresser sit for about two weeks so everything would be nice and dry before I had to start sanding it. The painted finish under the polyurethane is just fine, so all I need to do is sand this polyurethane smooth so that I can respray the blue and get a fresh start. I started by sanding with a 220 grit sanding sponge and I wasn't looking forward on having to do the whole piece with this. Luckily, while I was sanding, I got my surf prep sander in the mail. 
I didn't want to use my orbital sander or my detail sander to do this sanding because I didn't want to scratch up or mar the paint around the detailed areas which would definitely show up in my new paint finish. The foam pad on the surf prep sander allowed me to get into all these details and the curves of the body of this dresser without sanding too far down into the paint. So this came at the perfect moment, saved me a bunch of time, my arms weren't sore the next day. A vacuum attachment is nice to have as it cleans up the majority of the dust and it feels like you don't need to have a mask on, but it would be a good idea to go ahead and wear one. Once I was done with my sanding, I wiped everything down again so that I could get ready to spray again. This time the weather was much warmer and drier than when I first applied everything so I was able to get away with two coats of paint to cover everything up. This dresser had a lot of dents and dings in the wood as part of the original finish. I didn't fill this larger one because it kind of went along with the other dents and dings but by the time I had sprayed all these coats of paint and polyurethane the other dings were gone, so I decided to go ahead and fill it, sand it, before I sprayed my last coat. Here is my last coat of paint being applied. After the last coat was applied and had a few hours to dry, I applied the gold gilding wax on the details again. This gave me a chance to use the sponge on the whole piece to see if it was faster. I feel like it saved me a lot more time. Then it was time to face my fears and apply this top coat again. I started off by applying two thin coats, allowing 30 minutes to dry in between. Once the second coat was dry, I used a 320 grit sanding sponge to smooth everything down on the top before I came back to spray my final third coat. Here on my final coat, I'm spraying it a lot thicker than I did on the first two to get a smooth finish. This is exactly how it looked on my first attempt. We'll have to give it some time to dry and see if it actually clears up. The original brass handles weren't going to match the gold gilding that I did on the details. So I cleaned them up and then used some Rust-Oleum Oil Rub Bronze and pure gold spray paints in layers to give me a tone that was closer to gold but still dark. Then I used the same gilding wax that I used on the details of the dresser along the edges of the hardware to highlight them and kind of give them a two-tone look that would tie into the dresser well. I protected the handles with a few light coats of polyurethane and then it was time to install them back on the dresser. Obviously the polyurethane cleared up like it was supposed to. Finally, everything is complete. I hope some of y'all learned from the mistakes that I made. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this video. If you like my projects and my videos, subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications whenever I upload new videos or do a live stream. Make sure you hit the like button, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your pets. Don't forget to check out Jay Streezy's channel if you need something entertaining to watch. And I'll see y'all again soon.